So I was currently in the process of working on a case study about the Apple Vision Pro. And uh, shout out to Melly Mel. He DM'd me saying that he's anticipating my case study on the YK Osiris and Sukiana situation that just happened recently. Apparently, YK Osiris basically forced himself on Sukiana. And I think there are several layers to this situation, as, as always. <laughs> The right one, then. I will give you all of that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I need to kiss the tattoo. I know I would see some neck drip right there before. Oh, my God. A couple months ago, she was in the media after making comments about Dr. Umar Johnson. She apparently wants to engage with him sexually. Dr. Umar responded talking about her image and her branding and if she's willing to change some of her image that maybe they can collaborate in a business capacity. She's been known for having some sex tapes out and a few weeks ago, I believe, um, she was on stage with the comedian Drewski. He just ate my ass, he wanna switch! Oh. Now he hits it! Oh, 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 he hits it! Oh, 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 he oh, 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 for me, I think the best place to start is the pathology of a whore. I think a lot of times as a society, especially as a community, we oversimplify what creates women like Sukiana. We don't consider the sexual assault, the abuse, the neglect, the trauma that leads women to sexual promiscuity or at the very least branding themselves with sexual promiscuity. And I, and I think there's another conversation about black women in particular over indexing on sexuality and maybe in an attempt to feel more feminine, just like men go to hyper masculinity over sexualization is part of women's hyper femininity pseudo femininity so i think that's worth a separate conversation but it is sickening the number of women that i've had conversations with who've had something happen to them when they were children the ages of three four five sometimes even younger and all the research shows that who we become as human beings as adults is reliant upon what happens in those formative years, those years between zero and seven. And unfortunately, a lot of the research shows that if something traumatic happens in that time, there is a very high likelihood that your life will be set on that path. So when we consider what's happening to our black boys in the ghettos, when we consider what's happening to our black girls in the ghettos, in the country, all the things we sweep under the rug as a community, it's no wonder that all these years later, with the sexual liberation movement, with the feminism movement, with the shamelessness movement, you see a lot of repressed trauma manifest itself as sexual empowerment. I'm a hoe and I'm proud. I'm a stripper and I'm proud. I'm an OnlyFans sex worker and I'm proud. The genesis of it was what happened to you as a baby. And I think we don't do a good enough job having that conversation. So I would like to see us as black men particularly start looking at women like Sukiana with pity, not disgust. And I would also like to see us not exacerbate the problem by commodifying them like we tend to commodify women, particularly women who over-index on their sexuality. I, I sold my soul to the devil. I signed myself to the devil. I don't even own myself no more. During the Zion Williamson video, I talked about how Gen Z, young niggas, don't have the same decorum, don't have the same standards, don't have the same expectations when it comes to women. And that's why they tolerate women who used to be taboo. Right, Zion Williamson, he was messing with a porn star. And now we see YK Osiris kissing a woman who talks about eating men's ass publicly, kissing her in the mouth. I think the disposition that we're seeing come out of these young men is a direct consequence of not being raised by strong, intelligent, visionary black fathers. 
involved black fathers. And it's counterintuitive because you would think that if a boy is raised by a woman, he would be more empathetic to the female plight, empathetic to the female struggle. But unfortunately, what we see is two paths. Women tend to create pimps or simps. And in either case, there is a disconnect from the reality of how a man needs to operate with and around women. And I think this situation is a perfect example of that. Because you can see, even after he did it, he was trying to over laugh it off. He was even trying to dap up one of his homeboys. A part of him understood that this was awkward and inappropriate. But again, not being raised with discipline, not being raised with structure, and those things not being at the foundation of who he is, He's just allowed to, you know, float through life. And unfortunately, the reality is like boys, men are going to have to deal with more consequences on average than women. So boys, men need to be more careful and need to be more strategic in how we move than the average woman. Some people would say that she invited him to assault her. I'll turn you out. And, you know, as a broken boy, his ego is going to tell him, no, you won't. And I'm going to show you. And that's what leads to this situation. I make that pussy spit. And I know it do. I, I watched you walk in this motherfucker. So you can tell by my walk? I can tell by your walk that pussy spit. Hey, are you a country nigga? Where you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Camerton Road to be exact. <laughs> What's happening with it? Oh, yeah, I don't want to smell your pussy. I want to put my face in your pussy. You say, Suki with the good coochie, you know what I'm saying? You be talking about how good that motherfucker smell and all that. We can go to the back and I can come back and you give up. You want to smell my ass? I want to. I might put my tongue down that motherfucker. Oh my gosh, A1. But we're going to start with the sniffing though. You are aggressive. She love that shit, man. Look at her. <laughs> She I, like that old no, shit. I don't. You love that shit. No, I mean after like during sex, maybe, but you know, that not, not, not right now. <laughs> not all that shit you talk. Fuck that. You don't mention match. I'm here. What's up? So listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. In my conversation with Dr. Tia San Johnson a while back, I asked him about what got him into his current work, what inspired him to establish the Institute of Black Male Studies. And he told me a story about being at a campus function that involves students and professors and overhearing a group of students talking about their sex lives with their girlfriends. And they were specifically black boys talking about the things that their girlfriends want them to incorporate in the bedroom. And Dr. Johnson, being an older, seasoned gentleman, realized that there is a very thin line between what these young girls were asking these boys to do and what would land or potentially land these boys in prison. And this inspired him to start the Institute of Black Male Studies. This inspired him to do the work, the fantastic work that he's doing today. But I say that to say there is a very important conversation that needs to be had about the nuances, the intricacies of consent, the nuances, the intricacies of female desire. Because to men in general, I'm going to be honest, it is complicated. And to boys in particular who weren't raised with men who can clarify some of these more, more multi-layered, multi-faceted points, it is very, very, very easy, especially as a young black man, to get caught up because, and I say this all the time, if you just listen to women, you will lose. I wish it wasn't the case. I love you, sisters, but I have been studying <laughs> black women for a good part of my life. And female nature is fluid. Things can change with the weather. Things can change with the temperature. Things can change with the day. And men masculine energy is supposed to bring that structure. Because if you just rely on how women's thoughts and desires vacillate, it is very easy to get yourself in a bind. She might love you today and not love you tomorrow. There are countless stories of brothers who were engaged with a woman sexually one day. Maybe the next day they did something that she didn't like. And the day after that, she calls their previous sexual encounter assault. There's a docu-series on Netflix called Explained, and they did an episode on the female orgasm. And one of the things they detailed about the female orgasm and why it's so elusive is the fact that women's desires are peculiar, right? A lot of women's desires is shaped by pop culture, is shaped by fantasy, movies, novels, and one survey actually found that because of some of these influences, around 67% 
of women have fantasized about forced sex. Now, when you understand the nuances, she wants that from a man that she's involved with, a man that she has given consent either overtly or co covertly to. But imagine telling that to the untrained young man who has no male influence, who can actually break that down for him. And then when you look out into the pop culture and you see the type of masculinity that women reward, it's very easy to understand why some of these lines are so blurry. Man A can say one thing and it's considered harassment, but man B might say the same exact thing, but it's not. So unfortunately, the black and white thinking that we as men tend to default to is not how women operate. And as a man, again, having to deal with those consequences, you must be aware of that. There's a clip of one of my interviews that's currently doing its rounds on Instagram. And it's a clip of a young lady talking about being at a hookah bar and a young man that she knew looked over and asked if she was good. And she talked about how she instantly felt safer. She talked about how the black woman would not feel protected in a world devoid of black men. And a lot of people are sharing that because it's a powerful statement, especially in today's world where black men are being told over and over again that we're unnecessary, that we're not needed, that we're not protectors, we're not providers. But we also don't talk about the stories where black men landed in prison or black men landed in the cemetery because they were protecting black women. I alluded to the situation at the bodega a couple of years ago where a young man was stabbed to death because he was following the whims. He was defending the honor of his girlfriend. There's another story about where a young man went to beat up the abusive boyfriend of his sister after she reported her boyfriend to him. And the brother lands in prison and the sister finds her way back to the boyfriend. And I, and I think often those nuances aren't discussed when we are shaming black men for not hashtag protecting black women. The responsibility of what's expected from the black woman to be properly and adequately protected by the black man is not discussed. I mean, let, let's let's take it out outside of just the, the hashtag, but any entity tasked with protecting you is an entity that you must submit yourself to in some way, shape or form. You must submit yourself to its authority because the reality is, ladies, sometimes protect black women means protect black women from themselves. Sometimes protect black women means, babe, let's go. Sometimes protect black women means, no, you need to do this instead of that. But unfortunately, again, since a lot of us and our sisters are living in this fantasy world, protect black women looks like risking my life, jumping in front of bullets, taking on five grown men to defend your honor. It looks like getting myself involved in situations that you could have walked away from, situations where you didn't have to talk back, situations where when I said, baby, let's go, you could have just listened to me. But again, Unfortunately, black men's lives only matter when we're dead. Black men only are great when we die in honor of, when we are martyrs. I'm reminded of when Martin Luther King himself, before his passing, said, I don't want to be a martyr. I have no martyrdom complex. I want to live a full, long life. Black men deserve to live a full, long life. And unfortunately, my issue with the hashtag protect black women is it does not take into account some of the ways that our women put us in danger. And I think what it really boils down to is the fact that men are forced to have a working understanding of women to get women. But a lot of women do not feel like they need to have any working understanding of men or male pathology outside of the critiques. So you don't understand that when I show up to quote unquote defend your honor, I'm in beast mode. I'm in warrior mode. I'm not thinking about the consequences. So as my woman, part of protecting me is having that forethought to think about those consequences for me. Part of understanding men is understanding what testosterone does, what testosterone is. You can see two women bicker and be catty and the worst thing that might happen is a drink get thrown. That's not how men operate. The worst thing that might happen is somebody might die. And there are countless examples of this, especially when it comes to grown men. Part of the reason black men don't feel loved by our women is because sometimes our women do not protect us. Our women do not take the time to understand us outside of the ways that we serve you, outside of the ways that we satiate your desire to see male emotion performed a certain way. I've seen a lot of conversation about respectability politics. You shouldn't have to talk a certain way. You shouldn't have to look a certain way, dress a certain way. 
move a certain way, to be treated and accorded with respect and reverence. And to a certain extent, I agree, especially in the ways where my blackness does not make me uneducated. My blackness does not make me ignorant or stupid. And even if I'm not speaking with a certain accent, speaking with a certain diction, the immediate assumption shouldn't be that I'm unintelligent. However, just like I would tell my daughter, just because you go out dressing like a hoe doesn't mean you're a hoe, but it means that's how the world is going to treat you. That's how the world is going to see you. Because as a species, we've evolved to categorize things and compartmentalize the world around us. Maybe that'll change in the future, but the reality is we see a certain color plant and we know that might be poisonous. We see a certain color frog, we know that might be poisonous. We see certain patterns on a snake and we know I need to stay far, far away. So to think that we won't do that with human beings is idiotic. So part of self-awareness, and I always talk about the Joe Harry window, you have to also consider how you are viewed by other people, by the external world. So that means, yes, your addiction is not just for you. It's for other people. Your presentation is not just for you. It's for other people. Your disposition is not just for you. It's for other people. So this popularized idea that they should just take me how I come, it's idiotic. It's not sustainable because then you can't fault people if they choose not to take you at all. So when we see Sukiana branding herself as a whore, performing whoredom publicly, to now have the expectation of us to accord her the same reverence that we would accord a Michelle Obama, it doesn't add up. Similarly, the amount of reverence I would accord to a scammer is not the same that I would accord to a nuclear physicist. For whatever reason, we think that women are immune to these rules. There are consequences to your actions. Reputation means... Everything. You study any culture throughout history. Men in particular were willing to kill or die for their reputation. There's a reason for that. Because your reputation affects not just you, but your posterity. And when I see some of these women creating these OnlyFans accounts, whoring themselves out on IG, I ask myself, do they think about their future sons? Do they think about their future daughters? This dream man that you're expecting God to place in your lap, do you think about him? Because... All these things might not matter to you, but they matter to them. They matter to future employers. They matter to future customers if you're a business owner. So people, we need to divorce ourselves of this idea that physics is in reality. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And not saying what happens to Sukiana is right, but this is an opportunity for us to investigate the ways that we are shaping our community and the paradigms of masculinity and the paradigms of femininity that for whatever reason we've chosen to popularize and mainstream. And I understand the people who say it's up to the parents to raise their children, but there are a lot of children in our community in particular who either don't have any parents at all or have parents who are still children themselves. So we need to think big picture and stop rewarding people for being public car crashes. If you wanna see more of this, please click that like button. It helps tremendously. And share this to somebody you think would gain value from the message. And hit that subscribe button as well. Peace out, y'all.